as God's people who are loved deeply, who gather in the Father's presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God our Heavenly Father, may the oneness of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. God loves us unconditionally, but that's not always the case for ourselves. We measure out love, we sometimes withhold love, because of sin. My friends, we call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Dear Jesus, you came to call us to serve Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord God, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise our God as we say, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, who would be always revere your, and love your holy name, for you never deprive us of your guidance. You set us firm on the foundations of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, insomuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law, but death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for many. The word of the Lord. said to the twelve, <clears throat> Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, the word of welcome to all who gather here at St. Jude this weekend. Uh, this is my first time being with you folks on St. Jude, St. Jude on Sunday, or Saturday and Sunday. So it's good to be back here with people in front of me, and that's great. Unfortunately, I can't see your smiling faces, so you're going to have to really smile a lot with your eyes, let your eyes twinkle. Uh, but it's good to be back with you. My hope and prayer is that pretty soon we'll have all the ministers back with us, the servers, and the lectors, and the Eucharist ministers, and all that kind of good stuff that'll be happening soon enough. And a word of welcome to anybody who might be watching on uh, YouTube or the internet. Uh, you're probably used to seeing Father Greg. Um, I have more wrinkles, uh, more poundage, and more hair. So that's uh, uh, just uh, my Father Dave, for those of you who do not see this face too often. 
but it's good to have all the people gathering for praising our God. Who is the person you most love in the world? Who is the person you most love in the world? Just think about that for a moment. The person you most love in the world. Well, possibly it's your husband or your wife. You chose them from countless others. You promised to stand by them and cherish them for the rest of your lives. You would probably pick them today, just as you picked them however many years ago. At least most of you might have picked the same one. Maybe some choices in between, but who knows. A loving spouse is a wonderful gift. A gift to be received and a gift to be given. But God loves you more. The person you love most may be your children. Most parents would do anything for the child. You'd go to the ends of the world to find them, to seek them out, to save them. At times, however, you might want them to go to the end of the world, send to the end of the world, get rid of them, but again, that's beside the point. The love of a son or daughter is something no parent can control, and yet you love them deeply. But God loves you more. Maybe the person you love is your parents. They did so much for you over the years. Maybe the person you love is your brother or sister. Um, you shared so much with them in life. Maybe the person you love is a choice, cherished friend. You tell them anything, and they accept you just as you are. There's always there for you no matter what. So much love between friends, between brothers and sisters, between children and parents. But God loves you more. God loves you more. The Gospel says, you're worth more than a whole flock of sparrows. You're worth more than a whole flock of sparrows. It's not always easy to believe that God loves us. We say it with our lips, but deep down we kind of go, oh, I just don't know. To see God, to see, to see that God sees us as priceless, that's the reality that the Scripture says to us. We know our faults all too well. We can at times be very selfish. We can at times be petty and vindictive. We can be hot-headed and less than honorable at times. When we think about ourselves, we often wonder why God would love us. We struggle loving others that don't love us back, that have hurt us, we don't love them. We find it difficult to share love with someone who has not earned it in our lives. How can I love somebody that hasn't earned my love? But God knows all that stuff. God knows who we are. Not as perfect people, but as sinners, as the second being says. God knows all the stuff we're made of that we choose to do, and still God loves us. What a gift that is. What a gift that is. Thank God that God does not love us as we love the world. God does not put a condition on his love for us. God does not see how we act first before he acts toward us. God did not manipulate us to love in a certain way. No. Thank God that God does not use our love as a model for his love. Just reverse should be true. We should use his love as a model for our love. Is it easy? No. Sometimes it seems impossible. And we sometimes choose not to do it. We choose not to love. Believing that God loves us unconditionally, continually, relentlessly, profoundly, is the foundation of leading a good and holy life. And two things happen in our relationship with God when we believe and know that God loves us. Number one, when we experience the human love, it's easy to love others. We love our parents, we love our children, we love our spouses, we love those around us. When we experience that kind of love, it's easier to love them. That's just human reality. When we experience God's love, it's easier to love God and to know that God loves us. If we believe God loves us, it's easier to believe God to believe that God is, uh, that we can love God. That's just the way it is. That's the first thing. The second thing is God loves us when we believe that God loves us in the face of our faults and our failings, our weaknesses and our sins. It's easier for us to love the faults and failings of others. We begin to see the beautiful person as God sees them. 
if God loves the imperfect you and the imperfect me, maybe we ourselves can love the imperfect other. Our spouses, our children, our parents, our friends, our neighbors. And yeah, even our enemies. But we're willing to give them the same gift that God has given to us. That's the challenge, to love them. Do not be afraid. You're worth more than a flock of sparrows. God loves you more.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by those actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ your Son. In Him you, have re you were pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of the cross brought peace to the creation. Therefore, He has been exalted above all things, and to all who love Him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels, and angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hopes and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostle, glorious martyrs, St. Jude, with all the saints, under his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice for reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and David our Bishop, your other bishops of clergy and religious, and the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of the family who have summoned you before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased with you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's peace be with you always. And with your spirit. Please turn one another and offer each other some sign of peace.
renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your loving mercy, O Lord. And what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a celebrity in our midst. Um, Deacon Jerry was a feature article in the Compass this week. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you'll see this other article. I'm, anybody wants his autograph, just give me around after Mass for his autograph. So. <laughs> You've got a compass, you can autograph that card and call it. Nice article, Deacon Jerry. Nice article. This weekend is Father's Day weekend, so we pray for all fathers. I ask us to uh, share with them uh, this, uh, this following prayer Lord, we thank you for our fathers, for the new ones who endure sleepless nights with infants in their arms, for busy ones who juggle the pressures of home and work and family life. For the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children. For the patient ones who always seek to forgive and engage with their preteens. For our persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with their many adults. For the father uncles who step into cradle and care for nieces and nephews. For all grandfathers who love and support their precious grandchildren. For foster dads who are called to gather and cover the fragile ones. For the Sunday dads who care for our children and lead them in faith. For the dads who give far beyond their own resources, who overcome disabilities, cherish, and to love. For fathers who have no children, but cherish the next generation as their own. For the fathers who have died, but who live on in our memory, and whose love continues to nurture us. Thank you, Lord, for all of our wonderful fathers, Help us to support them, to love them, and keep them in our prayers. May your blessing be upon them on this Father's Day and throughout the year. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And dads, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Normally I would ask you to hug or kiss them, but you can't do that, so just uh, <laughs> pretend you don't like them for a few minutes. But you won't give them a big hug and kiss. Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and spread that love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.